It was wintertime and Christmas was approaching. I was 25 years old and I was going to meet up with some of my friends who lived on the other side of the city. It was a four hour drive from my place, so I decided to take my own car instead of a local cab. It was my first time going alone on such a long drive and I felt nervous, but excited. At midday, I packed my bags, threw them in the trunk, and went off to meet my friends. It was a cold day, but the roads were clear. I didn't see much traffic as it was the holidays, and people would rather spend time with their families and friends indoors and stay off the roads. Now, I'm not the type of person to go straight to my friend's house. I like to take my time. I'm a social media freak, and I enjoy posting pictures pretty much all the time. So I found the journey an excellent excuse to post some extra pictures. The road I was taking had beautiful scenery, and the place where my friends lived was even more magical. I stopped a lot during my ride to take pictures. I was having a great time by myself. Well, that was until the weather suddenly changed. It was around 6 p.m., and I was still driving. I still had a long way ahead of me. And that's when it started to snow. Not just a dusting of snow, it was thick and heavy. After 15 minutes or so, the roads were already covered with a few feet of snow. I felt anxious, since it was getting dark and I wasn't even halfway through the drive. My car slowed down, and I had to force it to run on the empty roads. The heavy snow didn't stop. I decided that I would stop at the closest gas station I could find, but unfortunately, I couldn't find one for a while. An hour later, I finally saw some light shining from the distance. It was a gas station. I pressed the accelerator, rushed to the station, parked my car, and went inside quickly. Just as I entered, a strong snowstorm started. The gas station had a little shop tucked away with some chairs to sit on. The guy at the counter was an ordinary fellow. He didn't really talk much. He only asked me where I was going in such harsh weather. After that, I bought some chips and drinks and sat down in the furthest chair from him. It was night now. I sat, munched on my food, and scrolled through an Instagram. Then, suddenly, the shop's door opened. I looked up, and a very weird-looking man entered. He had long, greasy hair, was wearing a long coat, and had a very grim expression. I saw him buy some cigarettes, and he sat down a few chairs away from me. He didn't look at me at all. At first, I ignored him, but then he started smoking. Since the shop was small and the smoke filled the air quickly, the shopkeeper told him to stop, but he didn't listen. He couldn't ask him to leave because of the storm, so he didn't say anything else. I, on the other hand, hated cigarettes. The weird guy was looking down, breathing very heavily as he smoked. It was as if he was breathing in my ears. So when he took out his fifth cigarette, I lost my temper and angrily told him to stop. He looked at me for a couple of minutes. His big eyes were red with anger. But then he smiled and stopped smoking. His smile was unnerving. I sat down again and distracted myself on my phone. Shortly afterwards, my friend called me, asking why I hadn't reached their place yet. I told him the whole story and he said the storm would soon be over and I shouldn't worry. When I hung up, I noticed the weird guy staring at my phone with deep interest. I was afraid that he was thinking of stealing it. But to my relief, after some time, he got up to leave. At the door, he stopped, looked back and screamed loudly before running away, scaring the crap out of me and the shopkeeper. He didn't return after that. At 10.30 p.m., the storm ended, and I immediately left after thanking the shopkeeper. I went into my car, started it, and drove off. For some time, I drove in silence, but then I heard a noise. It sounded like heavy breathing. My heart rate shot up and my hands got all sweaty as the breathing sounded so familiar and so close. I looked through my rearview mirror and screamed. The weird guy from the shop was sitting in my back seat, smiling at me. I pressed the brakes very hard, got out of the car and started running. I felt him running after me too, yelling at the top of his lungs. 
The road was empty, and I felt hopeless as I knew he was faster than me. I only looked back once to see him running like an unnatural being and holding a knife in his hand. I increased my pace, still wondering how on earth he got inside my car. I might have forgotten to lock the door when I first left to go to the gas station. But now, it was too late for regret. My life was at risk because some psychopath was after me. Then I saw some headlights at a distance. I started waving my hands like a maniac, screaming for them to stop. They did, and it turned out to be my friend. He had come to pick me up as he was worried since I was pretty late and thought something went wrong. I looked back, and I saw that guy was gone. I got inside my friend's car and told him everything. He called the cops, and they arrived shortly after. We all went to my car first and noticed some marks made by a knife in the back seat. The cops couldn't find the guy anywhere. After some investigation, they let us leave. I drove my car and my friend drove his car back to his place. The cops never found the guy. And to this day, I still wonder what would have happened if my friend didn't turn up that night. I was 12 years old when this happened. My grandmother just got home from the hospital because she had a stroke. She couldn't go up to the second floor of our house in which her room was located. So my uncle, my little brother and I decided that we were going to sleep in her room for a while. Before this day happened, my aunt bought a new air conditioner so the old one would be removed. And of course, there was a hole in the wall for the air conditioner. I covered the hole with some kind of small box before working on the wall so the air wouldn't come in. Anyway, back to the situation. My uncle and I were playing a mobile game at 3 a.m. when this happened. We played for about an hour or so until my little brother had fallen asleep. While I was paying attention, I suddenly heard a small scratching sound coming from the hole on the wall where I covered it with a box. Its sound was like someone trying to remove it with something. However, I just ignored it at first because I thought it might be a cat trying to remove the cover. After five minutes, my uncle heard the sound and he whispered to my ear saying, Did you hear that sound? I said, Yeah, I heard it too, but maybe it's just a cat. Forget about it. After that, we had forgotten about the sound and we just played again. Until that moment. All of a sudden, my uncle quickly put down his cell phone and started to search with the flashlight. What's wrong? I asked him, but he pointed his finger on his mouth and pointed it to the window. It was quiet outside. That's weird. I heard someone's footsteps. He talked to me sitting back next to me. I tried to say that it's nothing, but this time I heard those footsteps. Someone was outside walking around with a creaking sound. So we eventually decided to look for it, opening the box cover. But before we could get closer, my little brother began to scream. We were shocked by that, but then we just laughed, thinking our reaction was silly. I talked to my little brother and asked him what happened. He said that he had a nightmare. We laughed again, much bigger this time. Bump! We abruptly froze when we heard loud footsteps from a roof away from us. My heart dropped. What was it? My uncle said with an anxious voice. We then stayed away from the wall and started panicking. I started to think that it might be a thief who was trying to enter our house. What if he would try to kill us? How are we going to stop him? What should I do? However, despite all my worries, nothing happened after that. There were no footsteps anymore, but my uncle and I had to stay up until the next morning, shivering together. A few days later, my grandpa covered the wall with cement. And that day, we were watching the local news, and we heard that one of our neighbors, who lived right next to us, had been murdered. They also reported that the suspect has not been found, so the cops were struggling to arrest him. We just couldn't believe the news. We just watched the news with our mouth open. That moment became the worst nightmare of my whole life. What if I dared to try to remove that small box to see outside on that day?
for this story. My name will be Charlie. Years ago, my first year of college, I lived in a dorm. But if only I knew what was going to happen. I earned a scholarship to college for baseball and all the players lived in one dorm. Being that I was a freshman, they roomed me with a senior so he could show me what right looks like. He was a pretty tough guy who no one would mess with, so I felt like I was in good hands. It was the winter and by that time of the school year, I was pretty set in my ways and comfortable. I was invited to a house party that one of the sororities were throwing, so I went with a few friends. When we got there, it was like any other party. People were outside and some were inside having fun. While inside, there was music playing along with people playing video games in one room and it looked like a board game going on in the other. That was upstairs. After a while, I went upstairs to see why anyone would be playing a board game at a party. When I got to the room, I noticed that it was the most quiet room in the house, which was odd to me. When I walked in the room, there were four girls and a guy sitting at a table. I asked what was going on, and they said they were using the Ouija board. I thought it sounded interesting, so I joined. But I never really believed in that type of stuff. While we were messing with the board, it said that there was a girl in the room, but I think that one of the other people that were playing moved it, so I left. That's when unexplainable stuff would happen to me in my dorm. I'd hear laughing in our hallways at odd times of the night, knocks on the window, and I started to have bad dreams. I told my roommate, but he told me it was stress from our upcoming midterms. That went on for about two weeks. Then one night, everything changed for both of us. I remember it being a Thursday night when this happened. I was asleep in the middle of the night and all I heard was, Charlie, 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 wake up. I remember making noises and being half asleep, but I acknowledged him. Then he said something that woke me up immediately. Charlie, what the fuck is that in the corner? I looked in the corner of the room and I swear there was a silhouette of a girl. I was so afraid that I jumped off the top bunk and I told my roommate to get up and run, but he was so petrified, he was under his covers quivering. Then she spoke. Why do you seem so scared? All I wanted to do was play with you. I told him I'm out and we both ran out of our room. He was yelling as she's talking. After that, we were both so shaken that we never went back to that room. We called the police, but when they came, they never found any girl. I don't know if it was because of the house party, Ouija board game, or coincidence, but that was a moment that I'll never forget. To this day, I still hear odd noises throughout the night wherever I go. When I was seven or eight years old, a man moved to my neighborhood. He was around his 60s and introduced himself to me. His name was Tom. He was the only one who spoke English fluently in our neighborhood, but he always tried to speak our native language. He seemed really nice at first. One day after school, my friends and I saw a new cafe in our neighborhood. We were curious and wanted to know how many desserts they had, so we stopped by and looked inside. Then we heard someone say, Hello, kids. He then said, Come on in. You can have all the desserts you want for free. Without thinking, we went inside and stayed there for two hours. After that, we soon stayed there almost every day after school. Everyone started to like Tom. One day, we went to his cafe like we usually did. But for some reason, I felt kind of uncomfortable. Because at some point, I noticed that there were only kids inside his shop. Tom came to me and said, Hey, I saw you yesterday with a cat. Do you like cats? I said yes. And he proceeded to talk to me more. He told me that he has eight cats in his house and showed me pictures of his cats. All of a sudden... One of his pictures from inside his wallet fell to the floor. 
I picked it up and I could see a girl's face with blonde curly hair and green eyes. I thought that she was his granddaughter, but what he told me next was a huge shock. He said, Ooh, this is my wife. She lives in London right now. I was confused because the girl in the picture was just a kid, maybe 14 or 15 years old. I thought that he was lying or something. Then I got up. Oh, I forgot. My mom is waiting for me. So I quickly left the shop and went back home. Then I just hugged my mom. The next day when I got to school, there were policemen everywhere. I didn't understand what was going on. Then one police officer walked over to me and he said, Kid, you have to come with us. They also called my parents, so we went to the police station together. It turned out that Tom's warrant was served. They found lots of data on his computer about the young girls who were raped by him. He even lied about his name. His real name was Hardin. The worst and most horrible thing was when they entered his room. The entire wall was covered with my pictures. When they said this to my parents, I was terrified, so I fainted. The police arrested him, and he was put in jail for several years. Now I'm 18 years old, but I am still afraid. According to my neighbors, he's returning to our neighborhood. I don't want to go out, and I don't even know what to do. If anyone has any advice, please help me and let me know what I should do. <coughs> when I was 17 years old, I went to my friend's birthday party. Lots of teenagers were drinking illegally. However, I was never into that kind of stuff, so I just sat with other friends and we just talked. Then, one guy I had never met before joined the party and started talking to another group of people. Soon he turned to me and introduced himself as John. He was quite tall and had remarkably blue eyes. He seemed like a pretty nice guy at first, but he gradually started to act weird. He kept following me and seemed to have a strong obsession with me. One of my friends, Callum, saw my discomfort, so he said, Quit it, man. Don't be a creep. John looked back at Callum, and the look in his eyes made my skin crawl. Why? She's mine. What he said was kind of creepy, so I called my dad to come and get me. Callum stayed with me while I was waiting for my dad at the front of the house. He's watching us. Callum told me, and my body went stiff. Here, hold my hand. If he thinks we're together, he might give up. So I held his hand, and then a loud shout of anger came from behind us. We both looked, and John was headed straight towards us. I was getting really worried. He looked like he was going to hit Callum. But just then my dad arrived, so I grabbed Callum's hand and we ran to the car. As soon as we both jumped in, I explained everything to him. When we dropped him off at his house and returned home, I was leaning over my bed and about to go to sleep, and then I heard the front gate open. When I looked out the window, to my horror, John was sneaking into our yard. Dad got mad when I told him this, so he grabbed his baseball bat and went straight outside. But when he came back after a while, he was frowning. He said you left your jacket. When I got my jacket, a small piece of paper fell out of my pocket. Dad picked it up and opened it. You're mine, Michelle. A few weeks passed. That experience had made me and Callum really close, so we started dating. One day, while we were watching a movie at the theater, I really had to go to the toilet. I rushed to the bathroom to avoid missing too much of the film. On my way back, at the door of the theater, John was there. He looked furious and was actually crying. Then he rushed towards me and said, 
How could you do this to me? I was baffled. I haven't done anything to you. He just stood there, stared at me, so I rushed back into the theater and told Callum what was going on. We left the theater immediately. I was pretty nervous about what happened, but I also thought everything would be alright soon. However, I was totally wrong. A few days later, I was in my backyard working on my art project when I heard sobbing. I turned around and John was there, holding a small container of medication in his left hand. My legs began to tremble as he moved closer to me. Why are you here? I asked him. I missed you, Michelle. I've been following you nearly every day. Are you with Callum just to make me jealous because it's working? But no, you are wrong. As John began smiling, my mouth went dry. I don't even know you, so please leave. But when I said this, he began crying again as he pulled out a knife and pointed it at me. I screamed and began running towards my back fence. But before I reached it, he caught my shirt and pulled me to the ground. He held the knife to my cheek and then yelled, I love you, Michelle. Nobody else can have you. You're mine. I was horrified, and tears were rolling down my face. Get off her! All of a sudden, my dad, who was gardening outside, quickly ran towards us. He beat him up with a bat and then tied him up with a rope he got out of his shed. And I heard John mutter, I thought you were alone. Once my dad made sure I was alright, he called the police and Callum. John began laughing like a maniac and yelled out in anger when he was arrested. I kissed her. She's mine. Mine. Later, we got a phone call from the police and it turned out that he was high on drugs and his room was full of pictures of me as well as a diary describing plans to kidnap and murder me. After that, John was sentenced to jail for seven years. I'm 22 now and Callum and I are still together. We've just moved to the city together recently. I have deleted all social media, but I'm still in fear. We are two years away from the date John will be released, and I know that one day in the future, John will likely come looking for me again. When I was 14 years old, we traveled to Jeddah for a few days. On our way back, it was just past midnight, and there were almost no cars around on both sides of the highway. My mom, dad, and I were chatting and laughing at each other. However, we just ran out of topics soon and I decided to lie down in the back seat. At that moment, I heard a loud bang and passed out for a few seconds. When I got my senses back, I tried to sit up, but the car felt like a roller coaster. So I struggled a little. When I finally sat up, I grabbed the shoulders of both the driver and passenger seats. And then, looking out through my window, I realized that the car was on mid-air floating. When the car dropped, the front bumper dismantled and slid past the right windows of the car. What makes the matter worse? Our car did not stop for us. It just started to run at a very high speed and my dad and I freaked out due to the situation. My mom was insisting him to stop the car as soon as possible. I could see that he was trying, but the car wouldn't stop. Fortunately, we stopped at the fast lane of the highway, and there was a gas station on the other side of the road. We rushed out of the car and realized that our front left tire burst, and I could see that there were still no cars anywhere. The road was totally empty. My dad was bleeding from his nose injury due to his first hit on the steering wheel when the tire burst. When my mom went back to check to see if he was all right, I suddenly started to have an eerie feeling. At that very moment, I could feel that part of the illumination from the gas station seemed to get dimmer. Lifting my head, I scrutinized in the woods behind the gas station. And then, two dark, gigantic figures were standing there and staring at us. I thought I was hallucinating, but those figures were literally standing there. Although I couldn't see their faces, I could surely see the silhouettes and those piercing eyes. 
Also, their sizes were absolutely abnormal. I stood there in fear. I couldn't even think of calling out my mom saying, look over there. Then those two figures slowly walked away to the woods and disappeared. After those things walked away into the dark, the brightness of the gas station seemed to be back to normal again. And then the cars on the road started to pass on both sides of the highway. It was like a moment of nightmare. We finally called the police and not long after, three police cars arrived. At first, the cops didn't seem to believe us when we reported our situation. But anyway, we were taken to the hospital and given treatment. The next day, a detective came to speak with us saying that this part of the highway was known as a haunted road and a lot of bizarre accidents have occurred, literally. The local government tried to investigate what was the reason, but it has never been solved until now. Since that day, my family never went on that highway. And a few years later, that highway was shut down due to the rising number of fatalities. This happened to me a couple of years ago. My family and I moved to a new house. It was quite old, and it had been sitting empty for at least 15 years before my family decided to buy it. At first, I was just happy that we had a new house, but after that, I had some weird experiences. My room was right across the bathroom, and at night, I would hear strange noises coming from it. Actually, if you listened more carefully, it sounded like it was coming from the walls. But when I finally got enough courage to walk towards it, the noises always stopped. Not much later, I got used to the sound and eventually stopped being scared of it. But that wasn't a problem compared to other things. My stuff started to go missing, like my clothes, underwear, and even one of my pillows. Sometimes I yelled at my little sister, since she often came into my room. I thought that she probably stole my stuff, but whenever I got mad at her, she said, Why would I take your underwear? I'm not a thief. Eventually, I couldn't find my stuff. Even worse, our food also went missing, little by little. My family and I felt uneasy. One night, I was laying in my bed about to go to sleep. And as I rolled over, I saw a figure in front of my door. That sent chills down my spine, so I rubbed my eyes and it was totally gone. I thought it was just my imagination, but after that, I started receiving little notes on my bedside table when I woke up. Pretty. I see you. And other weird things were written on it. However, I figured that my sister was trying to scare me, so I just ignored it. And that day became the most terrible memory of my entire life. One day, my dad and I were fixing up the bathroom. Because the entire house was pretty old, we were repairing the inside of the bathroom first. As we were tearing the tiles of the wall, Dad took the huge mirror off, and at that instant, I screamed. There was a little room behind the mirror, and there I found my stuff and even my underwear, along with empty food wrappers. We couldn't believe what we just saw, and Mom immediately called the police. They arrived pretty fast, and when they inspected that tiny room, they found out that there was a man who had been living in it for at least a couple of months. But he was not there, so the police promised that they would search for him outside. After that, we demolished the room, and since I turned 18 years old, I moved to my college nearby and got my own apartment. Sometimes, I go back to my hometown to visit my parents, but never spend the night. I know that the man was still never caught, and I'm always paranoid, wondering if he's still hiding somewhere in our house. This happened six years ago when I was 16 years old. One day, my parents were going to a concert in California, so one of my best friends and I had a sleepover at my house. After my parents had left, we played some video games, ate some snacks, and a few hours later, 
We finally went to bed when we got bored watching some more movies on Netflix. I was about to sleep and at that moment, I heard some loud noise. It seemed that our house's window was broken by someone. Being freaked out, I woke my friend up and of course, he got mad. Dude, get into the bathroom, now! I said to him and he replied, why? But there was no time to explain. I got up, pulled him by force and we went into the bathroom. I was paying attention to outside if I could hear any footsteps. Then, someone was running towards us. As soon as I locked the door, the intruder stood in front of the door and said to open up with a deep and low voice. But we didn't say anything. He stood there for a second and then he abruptly started kicking down the door. Open it! Open! Or I'll kill y'all! We were so scared at that moment. He finally broke down the door, and while they succeeded to come in, I quickly grabbed some medical scissors at the same time. I screamed and stabbed him in the leg. He dropped the axe that was in his hand, and then I finally saw his face. He was in his mid-fifties, and he had long, shaggy hair with 70s style glasses. His eyes were all bloodshot, and furthermore, I could see that he was drooling like a mad person. I will never forget the way he looked the rest of my life. Just then, he violently grabbed my scissors and stabbed me in the arm. When he attacked, suddenly I felt a deep pain, and I was so terrified thinking that we were going to die in here. I closed my eyes, and then my friend started punching his face. As he had learned martial arts for self-protection, and who had enough strength to beat an adult up, he attacked his face several times and took away the scissors from him. I started to help him attack that man. With one hand, I punched him in the throat, and when my friend pushed him, throwing him to the ground, we finally managed to get out of the bathroom. Before the man tried to escape, we pushed the couch from the living room with all our might and trapped him in there. He slammed the door and yelled with a mad, angry voice, but it was impossible to escape. I grabbed my phone and called 911. About 10 minutes later, three police arrived and they went into the bathroom. When they entered inside, they witnessed a full pool of blood took him outside and arrested him. Our nightmare was finally finished at that moment. One of the police officers stayed with us and my parents had to come back home early the next day when they had got a call from the police. After that, it turned out he was a serious kidnapper who had a mental issue and he was sentenced to jail for over 10 years. Since then, I've never had that kind of experience ever. However, I always wondered what would have happened if my friend wasn't there with me. I will always appreciate him for saving my life. I was 26 years old when this incident happened. One day, I was taking a walk with my dog, Molly. After walking two more blocks, we saw three men smoking on the porch and talking to each other. Two of them didn't pay attention to me, but one was staring in my direction. He was a bit bigger compared to the other two guys. He looked like he was in his 20s and was also bald. I quickly looked the other direction, but then he yelled at me from behind. Hey gorgeous, nice puppy you got. Come over here and let me pet her. Then I heard laughter coming from the other two men. So I ignored them and rushed over to my house. At first, I didn't tell my parents anything thinking that it wasn't that serious, but I was wrong. The day after, I walked my dog as usual, but because I was feeling a little bit scared, I took pepper spray with me. I walked past the same house hoping not to see that weird man, but he was there again. He was sitting on a rocking chair on the porch, and when he saw me, he shot up from his seat. In fear... I picked up Molly and bolted down the sidewalk trying to get away from him. But to my horror, he was chasing after me. He pushed me to the ground, making me fall onto the hard concrete floor and dropping Molly. I started screaming for help, for anybody to hear me. But he covered my mouth. Clawing at his hands, I realized that I had the pepper spray in my pocket. So I grabbed it and sprayed it in his eyes, and after a while, he eventually screamed out in pain and rolled off my body. 
I quickly got up and picked up Molly. When I got home, of course, I frantically explained the situation to my parents. My dad, who was a retired Marine, wanted to go to that house, but Mom just told us to go to the police station. I told an officer what happened and showed him my injury, but they didn't really help me. A couple of months later, I started working at a 7-Eleven. One day, I was walking home after my night shift. And when I turned the corner, I noticed a truck driving slowly and way too close to the sidewalk. I didn't pay any attention at first. But when I was standing in front of my front door, I looked behind me and saw the same car. Two men were in the truck and I could see that they were watching me. I told my parents again, and because of this, my dad was on the lookout in front of the house for a few weeks. Nothing really happened until that night. That night traumatized me, and the guilt still chokes me to this day. It was about two in the morning when Molly started barking at something out the window. Being too tired, I just shrugged it off and drifted back to sleep until I woke up to the sound of Molly yelping in pain. I opened my eyes and saw my dog's lifeless body on the floor covered in blood and a dark figure over her. It was him. Do you think you could get away from me? No, you were wrong. He climbed over me and started punching my face. With my blurred vision, I kept on kicking and hitting the man, but he didn't even flinch. And next, I heard him struggling to get his belt off. Pure terror swept over my body. I let out a scream before he could cover my mouth. All of a sudden, the door swung open. My dad held his gun in his hand and my mom was behind him. As soon as Dad saw the man, he shot him twice. The man screamed in agony and I pushed him off of my body. Dad grabbed him and started beating him, showing no mercy, and Mom called the police. I then ran to Molly, but she'd already passed away. About five minutes later, the police arrived, and they arrested him. It turns out that it was not only that man, but also his other two friends who conspired this. Their plan was to break into our house, kidnap me, and rape me. Fortunately, they were caught and sentenced to 16 years in prison for multiple charges. Until now, I still live with my parents because of the fear of being alone. And I feel sorry for Molly. I really miss her. I miss her so much. It was a normal, boring day in winter 2015. I was at home and had nothing else to do that day since the snow was so heavy. So I told my mom that I was going for a walk with my dog. I decided to take him for a five minute walk to the field near our house. And when we got there, the place was totally empty. I couldn't see anyone walking around. But I didn't mind, though. So we started walking again for more than five minutes. Then all of a sudden, I heard something. It was kind of like someone was moaning. I looked around to see where this sound was coming from. And at that moment, I saw it. There was a man wearing a dark black trench coat with his hood up and winter boots. Being frightened, I quickly ducked behind a tree hoping that he didn't see me. I laid down flat and ordered my dog to hide. He lay in the snow digging his mouth into it. The man stood there for a while and then he slowly walked off. A few minutes later when I couldn't hear his feet anymore, I quietly got up and said to my dog, come. He followed me and by this time I heard the creepy moan again behind me. I was terrified. I hesitated at first, but slowly turned around to see what was going on. Well, I hope no one ever has to go through something like this. Because what I saw at that moment became the worst nightmare I've ever had in my whole life. He was there. 
He stood there staring at me. But this time, he wasn't alone. There was also a woman next to him, and now they both had large knives in their hands. Especially, I could see that the woman was covered in blood, and her bright smile was spreading across her face like she was insane. I started running away, calling my dog to follow me. I was almost halfway to the field, but then I accidentally fell to the ground and landed on a broken beer bottle, which penetrated the side of my leg. It was painful, but there was no time, so I used all my strength to pull out the broken piece. I managed to pull it out, but after that it was hard to get up and run. I struggled to crawl on the field, spreading blood in the snow. I knew that it was definitely visible to them and they soon found me. The woman got close to me. Leave me alone, I shouted to them, hoping that someone would hear my voice for help. But no one was around. All of a sudden, my dog got in front of me and started growling at the woman. And when she kneeled down to stab me, he instantly jumped up and bit her neck. She yelled and swung around the knife on him. When my dog collapsed, injured on the ground, an uncontrollable anger surged up within me. I got up, grabbed her knife, and stabbed her side. I started to choke her, but then a sharp pain penetrated on my back, and when I fell to the ground, I could see the man was standing behind me. I thought I was going to die, and in those few seconds, when I was about to close my eyes, bang! His arm was blown off. It was my neighbor living next to our house. He was holding a shotgun in his hand. He told me later that he'd went hunting and when he visited the field, he heard my voice. His hunting dogs rushed up to the man and bit into his shoulder. After that, my neighbor got to me and tried to help me to stand up, but I told him to help my dog first instead of me. Then I finally blacked out. When I woke up again, I was in the hospital. My family was standing next to me with my neighbor. He told me that after I blacked out, the police arrived with an ambulance and that my dog was taken to the veterinary clinic and survived by a miracle. A few minutes later, a policeman came to report the information that the man who attacked me had been arrested, but the woman had died from shock. And it turned out that they were serious criminals and when they were sent to the mental institution, he had escaped with the woman. After that, my neighbor lost the right to own a weapon because he shot at a person. But he didn't care, though. He just told me that he did the right thing to save someone's life. And he also said that he's just glad I'm alive. Well, I'll never forget about this incident, ever. And I will always thank my neighbor and my dog for saving my life. It was Friday the 13th. I was walking home from my friend's house. It wasn't a long walk, maybe five minutes. As I got to my door, I realized I didn't bring my keys when I left my house. I took my cell phone out from my pocket to check the time, and it was 7.30 p.m. My parents usually don't get back home from work until 8.45 p.m., so I decided to walk to my grandparents' house, which is only about a 10-minute walk. As I was walking down the street, I saw a shadow behind me. I turned around, but no one was there. My heart started racing, and I started to speed up. Then I saw the shadow again, following. I turned around again. Nobody was there. I was kind of scared at that time, but thankfully I was getting closer to my grandparents' house. I texted my grandma and told her to wait outside the door for me, and she replied with an okay. When I turned the corner, I could see the house and my grandma standing there. I started to feel calm again, like nothing was going to happen to me. But I was wrong. As I was about to cross the road to get to my grandma, I was suddenly pulled into an alleyway. One hand covered over my mouth and another hand was around my body. With such an abrupt attack, I couldn't get my scream out. I looked down and I could see a very dark, black hand with long, pointy black nails. Lots of cuts and scratches were all over his hands. Its face was getting closer to mine, 
and it smelled like dead bodies. When I looked next to me, I could see a little part of its face. It was pale white with a tint of gray. I could tell that it was not from here. It was something that we should not know. Tears were flowing down my face. After being dragged through the alleyway, I was dropped onto the ground. When I moaned in pain, that creature stood over me, breathing into my face. Now I could clearly see its face. It had big black eyes, a big open smile with pointy white teeth, and a long red pointy nose. I closed my eyes, hoping it was just a dream. However, I felt their hand and nails were starting to dig into my neck, slowly and painfully. I, I struggled to breathe, but it was impossible. My vision was slowly blurring, and at that moment, someone put their hands on my shoulders. Another put their head on my right shoulder and started to whisper in my ear with a strange voice. So, this is how you end up when you forget your key on Friday the 13th. Then the creature started laughing and then everything went pitch black and silent. When I opened my eyes again, I heard a bunch of people shouting, he's back, he's back. I was lying in a hospital room and all my family was standing next to me. I looked to the left of me and there was a woman doing something next to a monitor. I asked her, excuse me, why am I here? What happened? And she responded, you were found in an alleyway near your grandma's house with scratches and cuts on your neck. As soon as your grandma saw you being pulled into the alley, she immediately ran after you. She found you laying there as pale as paper with your phone in your hand and blood running from your neck onto the ground. So she called 911 and now you're here. Looking her straight in the eye, I was immobilized with terror. I couldn't believe what she was saying because I couldn't remember what happened to me. And then when I looked to the right of me on the bedside table, there it was. I could see my house key. Sometimes you never truly know what is out there until you've seen your nightmares come to life. I was about 21 years old the day I realized its true meaning. At the time, I worked in a warehouse for a minimum wage. There was this dark corner in the very back of the warehouse which every employee knew about. It was an unnaturally cold place with stale air. I felt like it was alive watching closely over your shoulder. Despite having an old factory light hanging directly over the shelves, it was never a bright place. My job was to stand and scan all of the items on the shelf, along with pick lists which were printed lists with items on them. The models would wear these items and then I would put them back where they belonged. It was a Wednesday, and my team leader handed me a pick list of items for the models to wear. It was my job to get them to the studio for fitting as soon as possible. A hat, check. Some shoes, check. And then the third item, sweater. When I arrived at the dark corner, there was a woman standing near one of the shelves. I could hear her breath shaking as she was hunched over it scanning each item as quickly as she could. Occasionally, I would hear her say the F word as she scanned the many items, trying to find the one she was looking for. I looked at my pick list and searched for the shelf number. At every step, my body would come closer and closer to the very corner of the warehouse. I could feel something staring at me. It felt like they were a foot behind me. I looked at the shelf and took another few steps towards it. The deep beating in my chest grew and the urge to look behind me became the only thought in my head. I finally looked. There, 
Behind the woman was a manly figure with long arms coming out of his back. The arms dripped with black smoke. The beating inside of my chest grew louder and louder until I could even hear it. She didn't even notice. She didn't even see it, but I could see her arms shaking. The figure wrapped his arms around her and pushed her body into his, as though his chest could feel hunger. I didn't know what to do. It's not like she could see it. How am I supposed to tell her to run if she can't even see him? Frozen, I stood there watching this thing wrap himself around my co-worker. Then he saw me. He saw me looking right at him and noticed I could see him too. I looked down quickly at my pick list, hoping he would believe I didn't see him. If I just finish this thing, I can go. The number for the shelf was JH243, which was the last shelf at the end. I was about five feet away from JH243 when I lifted my gaze up from the ground. Long, slender fingers slowly crept over the corner of the shelf. The corner grew shadows darker than anything I could have ever imagined. Following the fingers was an inhuman head, ever so slowly creeping itself around the shelf. I had to do this. I had to get the item as fast as I could so I could leave. Acting as though I didn't see him, my gaze locked on the shelf and I grabbed the sweater I needed. One scan, it didn't work. I scanned again, and it didn't work. A black shadow encompassed me. I could see the top of his head, but his eyes didn't come second. He didn't have a face. It was just a pit. As fast as I could, I grabbed the item the woman was looking for and hurried her away. After that terrible incident, a few weeks later, I hosted a birthday party at my house. My guests kept saying they heard whispering and ended up fighting each other during a cookout. I brushed it off as people playing jokes until I was alone and doing the dishes another day, and I heard this constant whispering like someone was right in my ear. I was so scared and thought my boyfriend was playing a joke to scare me, but he was at work, and my sister was also at work. I hung up the phone and then went into the kitchen and all the drawers were open. Later that day, I was cooking in the kitchen and my sister made a joke about the house being haunted. While she was talking, a cross fell off the wall all of a sudden. I placed it back on the wall and she made a joke again about it being a demon. Then the cross came off again and I told her not to worry about it because maybe the nail wasn't right and laughed it off. I placed the cross on a bookshelf nearby with its back on the surface. She was quiet after that until she made another joke to lighten the mood. The cross on the bookshelf, which was across from her, flew off horizontally. Weeks went on, I began seeing this shadow in the morning when I woke up. I ignored it because no way was that real. It was just my imagination. I didn't know where else to go, so I went to the church for help, telling them everything I was experiencing, but they said they couldn't help me. I tried sitting in the church, and all I heard was hissing, literally snakes hissing, like it didn't want me to listen. Not only that, but I went from a positive, happy person to a grim, hateful, resentful girl. Merely wishing something happened to people was dangerous. My dad has been convinced to this day that I was possessed by a demon because of how much my personality changed. After that, I stopped accepting any guests. I started throwing up everything I ate and couldn't keep anything down until I was hospitalized for starvation. I just remember the day I felt so weak and called 911. I was scared. I felt like I wasn't going to be here for much longer. Then all of a sudden, there was a light that told me it was okay. I never knew what it was. 
After that, everything was gone. I was there for three weeks with mental evaluations, and they said nothing was actually wrong with my mental health. I don't know what is out there, but that experience scared me. And this is what made me realize that something is out there.